Introduce yourself, the work you do, and what is the latest victory? Okay. Um, well, we're both actually here on behalf of Smash Edo and the decommissioners. Um, we'll explain what that is exactly. Um, my name's Pete. I do a lot of work with ISM as well, the International <coughs> Solidarity Movement. I'm Rob, and I'm with ISM, and I've done stuff with Smash Edo as well. They couldn't come as they're rather tied up with the court case at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to talk about Smash Edo first? Um, for people who don't know what the decommissioners are, uh, Smash Edo is a campaign which was run against a factory in Brighton which makes, um, amongst other things, bomb release mechanisms for F-16s which they've exported to Israel. And <coughs> they've run a campaign consistently since 2004 which kind of grew on the back of the anti-war movement. Um, during the bombardment of Gaza, Operation Karstead last year, people got into the factory and they smashed as much as they could. They threw computers out of it, they threw filing cabinets out, and they smashed as much manufacturing equipment as they could. Yeah. Um, they started their trial yesterday and um, they had to fight for the right to use uh, the war crimes of Israel as a defense. They've won that, including the right to use the Goldstone Report, which I think is incredible. And their case started here. Um, so I was actually down in Brighton with them yesterday when the trial started. Uh, so I can give you a bit of feedback. I mean, just as a bit of context to sketch in a few details, um, there's, I think, six of them who are being, five or six who are being charged with criminal damage, who are the, uh, the people who actually got into the factory and decommissioned it. Um, and then there are three others who are being charged with conspiracy to cause criminal damage. They were found in locations around the factory with videoing equipment, um, and they've been charged as well. The people who actually, who actually carried out the decommissioning had filmed videos before they went in explaining what they were doing the fact that they were trying to do this to prevent a greater crime, that um, the crimes going on in Gaza were horrific and the absolute inaction and complicity of our government and companies like Edo uh, was unacceptable and it was taken into the hands of civil society to actually prevent these killings from taking place or at least try to limit the damage as much as possible. So once they had decommissioned the factory, they sat there peacefully and waited for the police to arrive. Um, so like Robin has said, the first, uh, the first hurdle is really to make it a legal argument rather than a moral argument, so a legal argument that can be submitted in a court, following on from what Uri has been saying, it's a very, very significant and very important way to challenge what's going on in Israel, and that has been accepted, so now the argument that they were preventing a greater crime is admissible in the court, and there is a now a jury trial taking place from yesterday. Um, there are also precedents to what they've done. Um, I'm trying to remember, there's a Raytheon 9 in Derry who smashed up the Raytheon factory in 2006 and were acquitted. Yes. Um, and there were five people who uh, smashed up a Navy C-40 transport plane in 2003 who were also acquitted, uh, also in Ireland. Um, so there are precedents for this kind of thing. Um, so what happened yesterday, it started very well. It was mainly just um, sort of an explanation of, of <coughs> what the charges were and, and the defendants were there in court to kind of State their, state their details and that sort of thing, but um, as Robin hinted, the judge, uh, first of all, helpfully, there was a jury member who was thrown out who turned out to be um, someone who had served in the military in the Middle East and had very, much, very set ideas about what he was going to decide. So luckily that was kind of exposed and they were got rid of. And then the judge said that it was perfectly legitimate to use evidence like the Goldstone Report to kind of contextualise what they did, because it's very difficult a year and a half on for members of the jury who are just members of the public to understand and really remember the kind of sense of anger and frustration that was going around at the time of, the, of, of Operation Cast Lead, um, which will give a greater sense of proportionality, obviously, when you have activists who have gone into a factory and destroyed equipment, lifeless equipment, which I would say is non-violent because there is no harm being done to any living thing, in order to prevent greater crimes and further loss of life in another place. It's almost non-violent on a, on a, on a, on a, in a double sense. Um, so hopefully that sense of proportionality of the tiny damage done to the factory compared to what was done to Gaza will be very, very, very obvious. Um, and as for today, it's gone even better, <laughs> apparently. Just been on the phone to somebody who's been in the court today. Um, let me try and remember what she said. Basically, that today and tomorrow we have the head of EDO, ITT, called Paul Hill, who's in the dock and is being examined. 
he is a man who's prone to getting a little bit um, stressed when he's put under pressure and saying some very silly things and apparently that is exactly what's happening. Um, he's being exposed to, he's kind of looking a little bit duplicitous. He was very surprised by the material that the defence has. He didn't realise that they actually had found a pitch that he'd made to a US bond company where he was explaining what co components could be taken over that were made in EDO that are used in US construction, which is then shipped to Israel and used in F-16s in Israel for the bombing of Gaza and that sort of thing. He had no idea they had that. Um, so they're trying to lie about the components they make, they're trying to lie about whether they know where they go. Um, the QC for the defence has apparently said that the best stuff is actually going to come tomorrow, so that should be interesting. And the judge has even thrown out some of the component certificates that EDO have turned up with manufactured by themselves. He said they're not worth the paper they're written on because obviously they've manufactured them themselves. So um, it's all very, very, very positive at the moment. The judge seems to be accepting political arguments that are being made. Um, so really, our call and what we would say here is that this is definitely a way forward, a very positive and constructive way forward to challenging the occupation and challenging the human rights abuses that go on. So really it's a call for solidarity with these people who really, when they undertook what they undertook, they were very well aware of the kind of sentences that they could be facing. Um, Elijah Wood has actually been on remand in jail since the day that he committed this. He's been in jail for a year and a half and has never been out. So um, these people have done a lot. Um, they have prevented a greater crime um, we just ask for sort of solidarity in the activist community and, and confronting this kind of the Zionist atrocities. Um, and it's important that these people actually do this and take things into their own hands when we have a government and its institutions trying to delegitimize what they do and stigmatize people as kind of vigilantism and violence when actually it's the state that's kind of being hypocritical and is actually warmongering and allowing this violence to take place and actively encouraging it to take place. Um, and on that note, if anybody can get down to Brighton at any stage to show a bit of solidarity at the court, at Lewis, that would be grand. Actually, I think it's at Hove now. It's been moved yeah, It's at Hove. And tomorrow there is a demonstration in Brighton called If I Had a Hammer, which is one of the... <laughs> 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 one of the uh, uh, if anybody can get down... If anyone can get down and show solidarity, inflatable hammers will be on show, and you can kind of stand outside the factory and show solidarity with the, with the defendants. Thank you very much. At Hove, at Hove Court, yeah. <coughs> Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you.